this is my hobby weight robot scuttle we just got back from seattle bot battles 2019 where we had an absolute blast in the tournament we got knocked out early uh, we lost our first two fights once by getting tossed in the pit by about half our size and once by catching fire with two seconds left on the clock we almost made it a full three minutes. Uh, despite our losses, we had our best performance to date, and we also won this amazing Builder's Choice Award for Most Innovative Bot. I want to say a big thanks to everyone at Western Outer Robotics for hosting uh, an awesome event, and the other builders for your enthusiasm and interest in my bot. Scuttle is a walking ring spinner. Uh, while reading the tools or reading the rules for my local tournament, I noticed a weight bonus for walkers and was just captivated. So I wasn't going to pass up the opportunity to bring a 24-pound robot to a 12-pound robot fight. Uh, putting the legs inside the bot uh, seemed the best way to keep them from being immediately broken and having a 360-degree uh, armor and weapon was the easiest way to deal with the, the lack of mobility. So the walking ring spinner was born. Uh, people are often amazed when they see it. The first thing they get asked is, how does it work? Uh, and I don't think they're asking about the ring spinner part. So let's pop the armor off and have a look inside. Scuttle has six legs arranged in a hexapod pattern. Here at the front of the bot, we have the weapon motor. And at the back, we have the power switch and a pair of a pair of voltage regulators for the legs. Uh, these drop the battery voltage down from 6S to 6 volts, uh, which is what the servos use, and also the, the logic. Uh, and there's two uh, voltage regulators, one for each half of the robot. Um, around the robot, you'll see these aluminum ribs, uh, each with rollers. Uh, this is what supports the ring as it's spinning around. In the center of the bot, uh, we have the battery. The weapon ESC, which is out right now, uh, lives on one side and the receiver lives on the other. And then underneath all of this mess uh, is the control logic. So this is a closer look at one of the legs. They're all identical and interchangeable. They each have two uh, 20 kilogram servos, uh, one for horizontal movement and one for vertical. Uh, the hip servo has a servo saver attached. Um, this is designed to absorb impacts on the steering on RC trucks. I figured Scuttle might be taking a few impacts, so this spring-loaded servo horn uh, really helps in combat. Um, opposite that, I've added a bearing so that inside the robot, these are supported top and bottom. Um, the servo horn on the tibia is cut down to be as short as possible, since it has to lift a 24-pound robot I wanted to have as much leverage as possible. This little linkage here is adjustable. Um, so it's adjusted on each robot so the legs have the same uh, resting height uh, when the servo is centered. And if they're not properly adjusted or off by too much, Scuttle will actually walk with a limp. Um, the only other thing I want to mention is that there's a rubber foot on the top and the bottom of each leg. Uh, so if the bot is flipped upside down, it can actually walk on the top uh, of the tibia, so it can walk upside down. So I designed these legs to be uh, as narrow as possible and be very sturdy, um, but basically it's got to fit inside the chassis between the, um, the ribs. So by being narrow, it has a bigger swing and can take a bigger step each time. So this is a closer look at the legs. Of course, I can't individually control 12 servos for my transmitter. I just don't have enough thumbs. So there are a pair of Arduinos in the robot that handle all the logic to make it walk. The primary one uh, captures all the signals from the RC receiver using interrupts on these pins here. Um, it takes these incoming signals uh, and calculates where each servo should be and when it should be there sends this information to the secondary Arduino uh, using I squared C. And this one serves as a dispatcher uh, to con continually control the legs and adjust each position of each servo in a smooth manner. Um, these right angle headers are where the 12 servos supply and there's a separate power input uh, here for each 
um, each side of the robot. Um, uh, why two microcontrollers, um, which seems a little overkill? Um, basically, it's a matter of pins. I'm used to programming these Arduinos, and I have a bunch lying around in my workshop. Um, but a single one doesn't have enough pins for what I was trying to do. So with all eight signals coming in and 12 signals coming out, plus power and ground and reset and all that stuff, there just wasn't enough IO pins for what I wanted to do. I may move up to something like a Teensy in the future, uh, just because I've got a bunch of pins and everyone can be used as an interrupt. Uh, but right now, it's easy enough for me to use a primary and a secondary and have, them have this one control this one. Um, a side note, so over here we have the pins for the uh, safety light. I use a NeoPixel ring for that. And then here uh, I have a pin where I used to plug in the weapon. Um, you can control a weapon, uh, ESC or any ESC really, from an Arduino just using the standard servo library. Um, but um, I've since changed my mind on how this is done. So this, this header is no longer used. I instead plug the, uh, the ESC for the weapon directly into the receiver, and I have a override on my radio that I programmed. Okay, so how do these dozen servos work together to make the robot walk? There are a few different walking gates for hexapod robots, but Scuttle uses a standard tripod, which means that these three uh, legs and these three legs are uh, each groups that work together. Um, so, um, let's turn this on, and uh, walk the robot slowly forward. I have it programmed that when it's standing still, all the legs plant down to the ground. Um, and you can see that when these three are in the air, these ones are down and vice versa. And we'll pause that because it's a little loud. Um, basically, each leg or each leg in each group will go through a series of steps where it will be down on the ground, move back and back, and then it will lift up to the middle and then down to the front again. But of course, as it's doing that, the other tripod is doing um, kind of the same thing, but on a different cycle. So as this one is in the middle and down, this group will be up and uh, in the middle. And when this one is back and down, this one is, goes forward and down. So it does mean that there's a spot in the gate where uh, all the legs are down on the ground. So um, remember I said that the robot can walk upside down? Well, if the robot's on his back and all the legs are down, um, and the robot's on its head, then we'll have this problem where all the legs will at some point be up in the air trying to walk. But fortunately, I have a switch that I can flip that inverts the walking gate. So the robot suddenly changes uh, which way it thinks is up and which way it thinks is down. So now when it's walking, it will always have some legs up here, as opposed to if it is flipped around, it'll be the other way. Uh, I got to actually show this off in the 12-pound robot rumble. Thankfully, my opponent was nice enough to flip me the right way up again. Another cool thing that um, a lot of people don't realize is that Scuttle has an adjustable ride height. I have a knob on my controller that I can use to adjust the midpoint of the legs, fine-tuning um, where how high it sits above the ground when it's neutral and when it's walking. Um, so this is actually kind of a cool feature because if I'm fighting a robot with a low wedge, I can drop the robot down to the floor and hopefully beat him in the, uh, the low ground battle. Um, but if there's a bunch of debris in the arena, say from a previous fight, I can raise the robot up, oh, raise the robot up, 
uh, and hopefully have the ground clearance to step over it. It's not a lot of adjustment, but about a centimeter and it makes a big difference. This is the side of the robot in its normal walking gait. So you can see that kind of triangle shape as passed by the legs and inverted. You can see it's walking on the ceiling. So. so the controls for Scuttle are more or less like a tank. It can go um, forwards and backwards. So uh, let's just get it forward and backwards. And it can also turn left and right. But it can also go, say, forwards and a little left and backwards and any sort of mixing in between. Um, it does this actually by um, taking a shorter step. So like if it's going forward and left, the left leg will take smaller steps, but the right side will always try to take as big a step as possible. Um, another thing I should mention is that depending on how far you push the stick off center, It'll walk faster or slower um, based on the distance that it is going. So if you want to make it do slow moves or fast moves, um, it just push the stick further and it will, uh, you know, pick a speed uh, appropriate. So it kind of scales the time it takes to make a step um, depending on how far the stick is in the center. One last thing I wanted to mention um, is that um, if the, the radio dies or if I disarm the robot with the switch, all the servos go to neutral and no longer responds to anything. So um, when it's armed, it can walk around and be happy and then disarmed. Um, but when it goes into its disarmed state or failsafe state, it centers all of the legs. So there it is um, up. There it is, centered. So no matter what it's doing, it'll go to that neutral position. And I kind of programmed this as a plan for, oh, hey, I'm in the pits and I'm just swapped a servo. What can I do to center a servo very quickly? I know, I'll just power on the bot um, without the radio and it will, uh, you know, safety clamps in place, everything, but it'll start up and make sure all the legs are in the center position. And so far, I haven't had to do this. I haven't had to swap a server on the leg, but you know, we'll see what the future holds. I do have a couple of spare legs, but it does have a fun added benefit that comes in during safety, which is when you fail safe the controller, when the weapon's spun up, it tends to drop to its belly. So uh, you've got the weapon going and it's doing its thing and you make it, make it go safe. It slams to the floor and uses the floor like a big brake to stop the spinning ring uh, very quickly. So that's kind of a neat feature. And of course, since it centers them uh, vertically, uh, if it was on its back and we lost signal or something, it would do that same trick, but you know, upside down. So that's all there is to it. I hope you found this video useful or interesting. Uh, again, big thanks to Western Island Robotics for hosting us. We're already looking forward to our next event.